I know I've said it. I'm Team Tank. I want Connor Bedard. I want Mishkov. I want the future to be boosted on this team. But I always say the same thing. Even though I can sit here and preach about how good Connor Bedard is and everything, at the end of the day, when I watch the Vancouver Canucks and I see them score goals, when I see them play well, and when I see them win, I cheer my head off. The Vancouver Canucks have defeated the LA Kings 4-1 to at Rogers Arena, putting them on a two-game winning streak. And unlike the other previous wins that we had seen against the Ottawa Senators and then the one against the Buffalo Sabres, unlike those games where the Canucks honestly played pretty poorly for good segmented parts of the game, this L.A. Vancouver game was really good, and we had ourselves rejuvenation performances from guys that we have been expecting to see them from for a while now. Thatcher Demko, take a bow, my friend. He showed up at Rogers Arena with a mission to prove to everybody in Vancouver Canucks Nation that the Demko of old still does exist. And we had Brock Besser on the other side. I've been calling out this guy for videos upon videos and weeks and weeks and weeks and no goals and only assists and all that stuff. And even earlier today, on Twitter, after Brock Besser missed what was a very wide-open net on the one-timer on the Canucks' first power play, and then gave the puck up on the same power play, which led to an LA Kings clearing opportunity, even though I was super harsh on the guy after, saying, hey, remove this guy. I've been the biggest Besser fan and critic the past few years, but... Even though that may be the case, we had ourselves the rejuvenation of Brock here tonight. Let's go over what happened in this game over here. Firstly, news on the lineups. Of course, Vasily Podkolzin, he's not in because he had himself the facial injury, the eye thing. His wife called him an idiot. It's kind of funny. We also had ourselves William Lockwood that was taken out because, guess what? It's Curtis Lazar who is back here in game action, and boy, oh boy, I just wanted to say first and foremost that Curtis Lazar, absolute beast out there. The guy had five hits in the first period alone. He finished off the showcase tonight with seven hits, but all in all, his line, Dakota Joshua, Oman, and of course Lazar, they were pretty good in this one. Protecting the puck along the perimeter, facilitating play, just keeping the play alive. They do a really good job at that. It's kind of funny. Their fourth line... Comparative to the expectations that we have, I mean, they're really good. But either way, this one starts out with a scoreless first period. It's the very first time this season the Canucks have played a scoreless first period. They always get goals early on, but this time, nah, it was 0-0 after the first. And this definitely wasn't one that didn't have any chances. Ilya Mikheyev had an opportunity, he went in alone on goal, kind of got hooked and he wasn't able to bury it. We had about, I think it was like one whistle in the span of six minutes in the first half of the first period. No offsides, no penalties, no covers, no icing, just a lot of back and forth rushes and zone time. You also had yourselves, Kempe, who got a cross-checking penalty with eight minutes to play on Elias Pettersson. That is when Brock Besser did the thing that I kind of called him out for. He missed the wide-open cross-crease one-timer on the open net. He missed the centering pass to facilitate play, which led to an LA Kings stealing of the puck, which allowed them to throw it down the ice. And I was really upset with that. Brock Besser, man, he had a bad power play. And I tweeted it out. I said, hey, take him off the first unit. But well, we'll get to that a little bit later on. Probably the best chance of the period, though, came at the very end when Riley Stillman behind the Canucks net throws it right up the middle to Kevin Fiala. Yeah, great turnover by Riley Stillman. Very good entertainment value right there as Fiala walked in alone one-on-one -on -one with Demko, but he got stopped. And that pattern of Thatcher Demko coming up and making saves that you wouldn't necessarily expect a goalie to make 100% of the time, this was the Demko of old coming out to play. Keeping things 0-0 at the end of the first and the start of the second, we had ourselves what was Vancouver thanking Demko for his tributes. 
The Canucks got a power play at the start of the second. It was Drew Doughty, but LA unfortunately rags it and they kill it off. Carl Grundstrom has an incredible shot opportunity on Demko. Centering pass from Fiala, Grundstrom was in alone. Demko makes the save once again. And the Canucks strike back with a beauty opportunity of their own. It's Andre Kuzmenko over the blue line, wing to wing pass to Elias Pettersson. He walks in, he shoots, and he scores. It's 1 0 Vancouver off of a really good rush by the Mikheyev Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov, oh man, did I just say that? No, Kuzmenko and Pettersson line. That goal seemed to really have sparked the Canucks' motivation in this game, as he had more opportunities, more pace. Riley Stillman had another giveaway, which was really bad, and Demko kind of bailed him out. Sean Walker then goes to the box for cross-checking, and with their third power play opportunity of the game, Vancouver actually strikes. It's Quinn Hughes who goes over to Miller on the left side, Miller to the goal, and Brock Besser, the guy who I called out earlier and who I've been kind of talking smack about the past little while, he gets the tip, his stick is down on the ice, and it's 2 nothing Vancouver. Hughes and Miller, I honestly thought they looked really good in this game, Quinn Hughes especially. He just looks so much more confident and poised, especially when protecting the puck from LA four checkers. This was a good game by Hughes, in my opinion. LA then replies a few minutes afterwards. It's a Sean Walker long shot tipped in by Blake Lazat. Nothing Demko can do about that one, honestly. The tip was so downwardly placed that Demko didn't really have a chance to stop it, but you give it a few minutes after the 2-1 goal. The Canucks play a crazy possession game in the LA zone. Edler broke his stick. Dakota Joshua kept it alive down low. Hughes was pinching in on the half boards to keep the play alive on the perimeter. Kuzmenko has the puck on the half boards afterwards. A beauty pass cross crease to the opposite side where Pedersen picks it up, he shoots, and he scores. 3-1 Van Vancouver with five to go in the second period. Pedersen almost scored on the next shift. Kuzmenko, Mikheyev, and Pedersen, I thought they looked really good in this one. And then the third period comes around, where Thatcher Demko makes so many saves. And this was probably the best period Demko has played all season. So many net front scrambles where the Kings are digging away at it. The referees are blowing the whistle early. Sometimes they're blowing it late. Drew Doughty gets all pouty about it. But Thatcher Demko is able to keep his ground, and he makes all the stops he's supposed to make. He makes the stops that he probably could have gotten away with not making. The Canucks then got themselves a four-on-one odd man rush, drives down the wing, he shoots, saved by Quick, but it's up in the air, and Besser tips it in, making it four to one. Brock has his first two goals on the year, and it only took him, what is that, 13 of his own personal games, something like that? The Kings then had themselves even more opportunities, and Demko kept on making save after save after save. The rest of the notes that I have written about this game, it's Kings with some good shots and scrums, but Demko makes the save. The power play that the Canucks got afterwards was killed because Demko made some good saves. 8-14 to go, the Canucks are up 4-1, to Demko has been lights out, Demko's a brick wall. More net front battles and Demko scrambles, but Demko is prevailing. And then at the end, you had Brock Besser. They were trying to feed him to get the hat trick, it was kind of funny, but they weren't able to. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter, because the Canucks win. They win 4-1 as the only game on the NHL schedule today. With eyes on the prize, you have Quinn Hughes showing off that he is still very good. Elias Pettersson taking control and scoring some beautiful goals in the ways that we know that he can. Kuzmenko setting up PD. Of course, thank you to my fantasy team for that. Bo didn't get any goals, but uh, it's okay. He was still pretty okay. Miller was good. Hughes was good. Brock gets his career back on track with this one right here. And Thatcher Demko, of course, on the opposite side of that. Demko made 37 saves in this one on 38 shots against. Jonathan Quick, on the other hand, he made 21 saves on 25 shots. But at the same time, I do think that Quick was the luckier goalie in this one. There were a few opportunities the Canucks had that could have very easily been goals, but they were just kind of thwarted off to the side or they were shot off the post and everything. By the way, yeah, Deneau hit a few posts as well. Um, Demko definitely did have his fair share of luck, but he made a lot of better saves, I feel, than Quick did in this one. The Canucks win a game where they actually were the better team. They looked good. They didn't cough up the lead. The guys that we're expecting better from, they showed off better. And at the end of the day, I mean, I can't really articulate how good of a win this feels. I know I'm Team Tank. I know I've been talking about Bedard. But hey, 
Let us enjoy wins when we can. We kind of got to enjoy the little victories while they're here, right? So, talk to the Conslayer thoughts about the Canucks beating the LA Kings, Brock Besser, and Thatcher Demko coming back to form. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.